the relationship between the rural and urban world needs to evolve from opposition to dialogue. It's important to understand that the development of urban areas cannot be conceived without protecting us and the environment that provides us with the resources that we deem illimited. And this requires a committed, well-informed citizenship with a broader vision, detached from cities and the actions of professionals who want to change things. That is the intention of our two guests today, Sonia Puente Landazuri, architect, urbanist and researcher of new tools for urban and territorial planning, and Teresa Taboas Veleiro, architect and vice chair of the UIA, the International Architects Union. They both created the Reverses Group that they will be talking about with Antonio López Peláez, professor of social work and Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law at UNED in a new space of the series Outlooks on Public Participation. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on when you are able to listen to this new program, this radio show of the series Outlooks on Public Participation in the framework of the agreement that we have between UNED and the City Council of Madrid called the Participatory Group. Antonio López Peláez, Professor of Social Work, is here with me today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Marta Lora Tamayo. And today in this program, we have two very special guests. We're talking about Sonia Puente Landazuri. How are you doing, Sonia? I'm doing fine. Good morning. And Teresa Taboas. We have a very interesting four-way conversation on the way. How are you, Teresa? I'm doing fine, thank you, Marta. Why have we gathered Sonia and Teresa in this radio show? Because they both represent a group called Reversas. They will be telling us about the group. The title of the show is Creating a New Narrative Around Land. Tell us a little bit more about what Reversas is and who the Reversas are. Reversas is a group of women. Initially, it was just women, but this doesn't mean that it's limited to, to women now. But we decided to create a group because we had similar interests and ideas with regards to how we should manage and plan our territory in the present and in the future. Each one of us has had different responsibility roles and we've realized in these kinds of jobs that you meet very interesting and less interesting people. So we wanted to surround ourselves with fascinating individuals. That's why Teresa and I created the Reversas group. So far it's called Reversas because we're all females, but we hope the group will keep growing. The origin of this name is the fact that we want to change the narrative and the outlook on how we create our cities and how we manage our land. I'm sure that Teresa wants to add something to this. Yes, I just wanted to make the remark that this is a group of people. We started as a group of friends. We are all architects, urban planners, and we have had roles in public administrations, in architect uh, associations, and we wanted to break the narrative that is always perceived from the point of view of cities. Everything is for cities, by cities, as though cities were independent without relying on other territories to survive. Cities depend on the territories that provide them with energy sources, food that collect their waste, so we wanted to break this narrative. Let's not talk about cities exclusively and let's talk on the interrelation and impact between them. Some of them are impoverished to enrich the big urban spaces. I'm thinking about Asturias, Galicia, but many other areas of the so-called empty Spain. And they are just there to produce, to supply the resources that cities need. So that's why we call it reversas from the word to reverse. We want to go back to create a different dialogue, a different narrative. Okay, but how did you get the group started? How did the idea come up? As we were saying before, we wanted to gather people with similar ideas, people who are enthusiastic about changing things here people who want to lead changes. And once we started 
meeting, we thought about how to take those first steps. We decided to participate in the last Congress of the International Architects Union, Teresa is the chair right now, a Congress organized in Copenhagen this summer, and we submitted a paper to the Congress, and it was luckily admitted. The document is a story, a story where there are two main characters, Heidi and Marvin, two children. Marvin is the protagonist of If I Forget the O Earth by Arthur C. Clarke, and Heidi is the protagonist of the story of the Swiss Alps. We wanted to ask ourselves why Heidi was so happy in the mountains. So the story is a dialogue between the two characters where Heidi is giving advice to Marvin. Marvin is, according to the plot, living in the moon because there's been a nuclear disaster and the earth has uh, exploded. So Heidi gives uh, Marvin advice so as to not repeat the same mistakes that were made on planet Earth if a new planet is occupied. These topics are very cross-sectional. They need to be dealt with from different perspectives. So we talk about territories, te land management, ecosystemic, holistic approaches to land management. We are not over other beings on this earth, so we need to coordinate to think about the whole ecosystem to survive. We also want to talk about inclusivity, equality. Everybody deserves to feel included within our territories. We talked about a feeling of belonging, sense of identity, things that are lacking in the rural spaces that have been neglected throughout the 20th century. We talk about the consumption habits. Luckily, we are talking about all of these matters a lot. We talked about productive soil, the fact that the rural world is producing all the services for us to be able to live both in rural but also urban land. It generates energy, water, food and all ecosystemic services, everything that we need to live in cities territories need to be thought of from solidarity. Urban area cities can only think about themselves because it's thanks to other parts of land that they can survive. So it's not just about solidarity with territories that are impoverished. No, we actually need them and rely on them for survival. Something else that we thought about was how to put people at the heart of policy priorities change. We are used to prioritizing the economy. The economy is essential. Of course, we all need it for livelihoods, but it's not the only factor. So these are the issues that come up in this dialogue between Marvin and Heidi. Teresa can give you more information about this. Before Teresa's remarks, I wanted to say that in the field of participation, there's a huge debate between urban and rural areas. Arlie Hoschild, a sociology professor, went to Louisiana to understand the conflict and tension between cities and uh, countryside, not in terms of abuse and use, but also opposing logics. What activities would you highlight? Well, as Sonia was saying, we submitted a paper to the most important Congress of Architecture celebrated every three years. There were more than 1,000 papers, most of them submitted by China. China is the country that submits most uh, scientific papers. I think we were the only paper from Spain that was published. That was our first step. We wanted to submit a document to basically highlight our main lines of work and our roadmap. We will be drafting other, more specific uh, documents from more general drafts. As you were saying before, we are at a point in time where architects and urban planners, those who research, investigate, sociologists, we are living in the Anthropocene. So in this framework, urban planners and architects need to synthesize all the expert knowledge that is out there and facilitate discussions and face the environmental crisis. We have an ethical 
duty that has changed nowadays. We need to focus on larger, more systemic problems and not only the elements that relate to cities. That's where Reversas wanted to insist on because there is a use and abuse. For instance, here in Galicia, I've seen the emptiness in rural areas. Elders are left, but even in very small towns with 20, 50 inhabitants, that's the case of a small town in Pontevedra against wind farms because people think, hey, you are destroying my ecosystem and it's not on my behalf, it's not to my benefit. The rural world is rejecting these developments even in small populations. An architect was mentioning some months ago in a conference that sometimes we've got the feeling that Rural areas, we want them to be empty so that there's no objections, so there's no no interference of this use and abuse dynamic. The fewer people that there are in the, in the rural world, the fewer people that can reject these projects. The topic that Reversa deals with is very interesting, but we are still developing our roadmap. Uh, Teresa, Sonia, what interesting initiative. I'm jealous because first of all, I mean, I've seen the pictures of your paper and I see that you have so much fun. You're a group of fascinating women that are passionate about a specific topic. And I also love the courage that you show as reversas to break with the classic narratives. There's nothing more boring or traditional than a paper, but in the content of this paper, you have been extremely innovative. I love that and it's a true lesson for a professor like I am. We can use classic formats like a paper in a congress to create new narratives, to tell different stories, like that dialogue between Marvin and Heidi that anyone can understand. So this vision, this participatory vision, this social vision will allow for a change of narrative and formats too. I think that it's a very original proposal and as innovative modern architect urban planners are very boring. I love that first step. There's something else that I wanted to highlight that is very interesting from the point of view of participation and the participatory group, this uh, group of practices with regards to public participation. I'm referring to the love-hate, the opposition between rural and urban, and talking about territories in a more holistical, comprehensive manner. I know Sonia more than the rest of the group, but Natalia Bremer has collaborated with us in many workshops, and I know that you not only have this idea from the intellectual perspective, but you've also lived it and exercised it from urban agendas, tactical urban planning projects. It's very difficult for you to provide us with solutions today. But Teresa, what you were saying hit the nail on the head. Sometimes there's a hidden interest where people want to empty the rural spaces to control them and fill our cities to control them easily, to manipulate populations. So as the participatory group, what is your calling for us so that we can find a middle ground between rural and urban, find that meeting point. Marta, what you are saying is fundamental. We need citizen participation because these kinds of papers innovate. We wanted to address everybody. When we draft documents, we want them to be easily readable by any kind of citizen, regardless of their cultural and social background, because at the end of the day, from the academic world, we synthesize in complex documents, but this doesn't reach common the common citizens. In the world of architects, we also draft papers for architects, by architects. Uh, we don't need to be more aware. We want to address other people. We want them to get to know about these kinds of matters for their for them to be 
well informed so that there's a demand by the citizenship that the citizenship is interested engaged well informed and then administrative bodies can change things yes economic power is concentrated in the cities because that's where all the raw materials coming from the rural world are transformed and knowledge is produced in cities because universities are also located in cities and everything happens from the urban world the rural world is perceived from the urban perspective in this rural urban opposition let's try to redefine the rural world of the 21st century is the rural world the same now compared to the 20th century what are inhabitants like the population living in the rural world have livelihoods that depend on the use of land but that land helps uh, cities survive so let's uh, make these messages trickle down slowly how fascinating i think that participation always highlights the invisible matters when you make the whole population participate there's a new message emerging that is not the dominant one technologies are not neutral when we think about alternative sources of energy with wind farms gigantic wind turbines that cannot be recycled but at least we free ourselves from fossil fuels but what about the fact that you are generating unexpected impact for biodiversity there's always something that needs to be debated discussed this that is the opposition between urban and rural we need to carry out a program about how participation has changed in madrid in vigo in pontevedra because of the fact that there are more pets than children your relationship model is your pet how does this change your world let's think about uh, the behavior of uh, wildlife from the perspective of our pets just to finish with this show this urban rural dialogue needs to be inclusive this is fundamental and it needs to put an end to this in lack of visibility out of the your upcoming projects could you maybe talk to us about something that is in your mind to join the urban and the rural world we want to start with specific projects in concrete areas so that we can change the instruments themselves that we use we are using very obsolete urban management tools because they insist on this duality this gap between urban and rural and in the discourse countryside versus city scales are very important the larger the city the more neglected the territory is because people are less aware of the damage caused to other ecosystems this has been thoroughly researched the bigger the city the less aware of their environmental damage and the impact that the city has on the environment and how much it contributes to the climate crisis you were talking about pets just a second ago this bond with pets is interesting because it might lead to the ruralization of cities we insist on green spaces to compensate for neglecting territory for so long so let's start with a specific project so that we can gradually move forward with this movement and make it broader natalia bremer from uruguay is part of the reversas group so we have a vision of what's going on at the other side of the atlantic there's a link around the world a professor of the university of columbia in new york is carrying out very important uh, work in territories in portugal with uh, lithium mines we were talking about new technologies before lithium destroys territories near extremadura this is happening the few inhabitants left in this territory have showed their opposition to the exploitation of lithium and they are doing this through the columbia university a month before the start of the pandemic an exhibition was inaugurated by a new priest in 
Dutch architect at the Guggenheim Museum about how the countryside is our future and we want to start with a very specific project that's our first next step in our roadmap that's the next thing we want to do and we want to keep working generating ideas knowledge papers thinking about that first paper we need to provide answers to the question why was Haiti so happy in the Alps this is a way to present our conclusions in a very disruptive way, in a very reverses way against the typical scientific approach of these kinds of congresses. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We are looking forward to reading those results. Playa Medica in Pontevedra is my recommendation for you to, to work there. It's a lovely beach. Uh, Bigo hasn't eaten it up yet, uh, but constructions are moving forward. So I recommend this beach. I go there a lot. Thank you very much for your ideas, for being the way you are, for being reversas, for making us uh, join your movement. I hope we can keep working together in the future. Thank you very much, Teresa and Sonia. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for having us.